please join me in singing the national anthem of the United States of America. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave Thank you very much, Michael. It was a beautiful job. Welcome to the dedication. Well, first of all, my name is Dan Wink. I uh, have the honor and the privilege to be the superintendent of Yellowstone National Park. Uh, welcome to the dedication of the Horace M. Albright Visitor Center and beginning of a second century of National Park Service preservation and service. We are celebrating history and traditions and also looking forward to the 100th anniversary of the National Park Service on August 25th of 2016. With today's event, we mark the beginning of Yellowstone's celebration of the National Park Service centennial. I would like to welcome some special guests this morning. We have with us Grant Teton, Superintendent and Chief of Interpretation, David Vila and Vicki Mates. Thank you for being with us this morning. We also have with us the Yellowstone Park Foundation President, Karen Kress. Karen, thank you for being here as well. I would also like to um, acknowledge all of the, what I will call alumni of Yellowstone National Park that are in the uh, audience with us today. And I, it's great to see you again here. And for those of you who are visiting with us again this morning, uh, please raise your hand so we can see who you are. There, look, all kinds of you out there. Um, I would also like to invite you to enjoy refreshments at the conclusion of the ceremony. Souvenirs of the event will be available from rangers in the visitor center. A full schedule of talks and walks and programs will be offered throughout the day. This schedule appears on the event program. I hope you have one. Uh, please take advantage of this opportunity to learn more about your national park. Many people have contributed to the success of the renovation and improvement of the historic Albright Visitor Center. Those people are listed also on the program, and we thank them for their dedication and contributions to the preservation of the Albright Visitor Center and its enhanced exhibits and visitor services. Of particular importance is the support provided by the park's nonprofit education partner, the Yellowstone Association. Grants provided by the Yellowstone Association funded the development of new exhibits for the Visitor Center and for the Fort Yellowstone Historic District, the walking tour, which you can see begins over right to, your, to my left, your right. Um, and please take advantage of these opportunities. It's my pleasure this morning to introduce um, two people uh, to talk about the significance of this event in this day. And I'm gonna start with Claire Campbell. Claire Campbell is a, an entrepreneur turned environmentalist. She's been part of the Yellowstone Association 
uh, board for 11 years. She assumed her uh, leadership as the chairperson of the board in 2013. Claire Campbell is a incredible wildlife advocate. She came to Yellowstone because I think of the wildlife. She became um, enriched in her understanding of the wildlife through programs offered by the Yellowstone uh, Institute and she grew in her participation to become the chair. She not only is a conservationist in, here in the United States but also in South Africa and her passion, one of her passions, is wildlife. And Claire, president of the uh, Yellowstone Association Board, please come and have a little chat with our friends. Thank you, Dan. And good morning, everyone. I'm really honored to be here today. Inspire, educate, preserve. Those are the guiding principles of the Yellowstone Association. And I'm delighted to say that each of those is so very evident here today as we celebrate the rededication of the Albright Visitor Center. As Dan said, I'm here on behalf of the Yellowstone Association, the park's official education partner. Our mission is simple. The Yellowstone Association, in partnership with the National Park Service, connects people to Yellowstone National Park and our natural world through education and engagement. For over 80 years, the association has used education and engagement to foster life-changing experiences in park visitors. Through our park stores, where we sell educational products, or out on a field course with some of our passionate instructors, or even just through connections made through our robust membership program, we're building a community of stewards and supporters for this very special park. And visitor centers are very key to that process. Visitor centers are where most people come and get their very first questions answered about Yellowstone National Park. And those answers can serve to spark a connection that can lead to a lifetime of engagement. I know this to be true because as Dan alluded, this is my story as well. In 2000, I returned to Yellowstone after first experiencing the park from the back of my parents' station wagon as a child. <laughs> my husband and I soon found the wolf watchers out in the Lamar Valley. They shared their viewing scopes with us. They told us that we were watching the Druid Peak Pack interacting with their pups at their rendezvous site. We were inspired. On our way out of the park, we wanted to know more, so we stopped at this very visitor center. We looked at the exhibits, I bought a book on the wolves, and I became a Yellowstone Association member. I was educated. Through that inspiration and education, my connection to this park has only deepened, and I knew that I wanted to be a part of trying to preserve it as well as I could. So you can see why I'm excited about what's happening here at Albright. This multi-year project is something that the association is very proud to have been part of. The association and its members were able to give our very largest gift ever, $2.3 million for exhibits on wildlife and park history, and as Dan said, to also support the new self-guided walking trail. In addition, we've added a beautiful new park store here. And in our park stores across the park, last year, we connected with over 220,000 visitors. At Albright alone, which by the way was out here in a temporary structure, we connected with 23,000 visitors, 1,650 of those who became Yellowstone Association members. Those members are on that road to a lifetime of engagement with Yellowstone, just like me. I feel strongly that the renovations here are going to enable all of us to connect with more park visitors than ever before. So on behalf of the Yellowstone Association, I want to congratulate our park friends and partners through your work on hard work and preservation of Albright, I know that you will continue to inspire and educate all those who stop by for a visit. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Claire. If I could take just a moment, I'd like to recognize Jeff Brown, the president, executive of the Yellowstone Association, and all the Yellowstone Association staff that's here with us this morning. We celebrate this historic occasion as the 100th anniversary of the National Park Service draws near. The Albright Visitor Center and the National Park Service share a richly, a richly uh, combined history. Following Yellowstone's establishment as the world's first national park in 1872, Fort Yellowstone was built during the 30 years of the Army Administration, which extended from 1886 to 1916. Albright Visitor Center was built in 1909 as the Bachelor Officers' Quarters. When the National Park Service was established in 1916, many of its policies, practices, and earliest employees were derived from those of the U.S. Army. The Albright Visitor Center represents the historic roots of the National Park Service. It's my pleasure to introduce someone who can talk a little bit more about the roots of the National Park Service and the Albright Visitor Center and the man for which this was named. Bob Barbie was a superintendent of Yellowstone National Park beginning in 1983 through 1994. 1983 to 19, excuse me, um, well it was 1983, wasn't it? To, to um, I'm getting my years mixed up to 1994. One of the longest tenured superintendents in the National, in Yellowstone National Park. He served with great distinction. He went on from Yellowstone to become the regional director in Alaska and where he retired, I believe in about 2004. About right? Close? Okay. Um, Bob is, uh, for me personally, uh, I had the pleasure of being here when Bob arrived as superintendent in 1983. He's been a, a mentor, an inspiration, and we're pleased to have him with us here today to talk about uh, Horace M. Albright and the Albright Visitor Center. Bob. I just had a back operation, so I'm stumbling around up here. Now, one thing uh, that you should know that uh, I wasn't told here by the latest uh, in technology, and I have my notes on paper, so they don't, the thing about these iPads, they don't blow away. So <laughs> I, I'm gonna get one. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you, Dan, and um, I, uh, you know, again, I want to, uh, like the others did, uh, welcome myself here as well as others uh, the visitors and uh, it's good to see old friends and uh, former colleagues and so on and uh, and actually be up here uh, uh, again uh, there have been other events that I thought about those as, as the years went by we had all kinds of stuff go on here and it continues and so uh, my congratulations to those who are responsible uh, for uh, this new uh, uh, new, actually, new facility. It's, it's the old building, but everything else has uh, changed, and it's a great change for the good. Now, uh, I have a, a friend, Paul Shaleri, who is a historian and worked here in the park, and and uh, I asked him one time, what uh, what do you think I ought to say in a situation like this? And he said, uh, well, don't tell them stuff they already know or that they can look up. And, uh, and in this case, that's a tall order uh, because uh, there's all manner of things written about, about uh, uh, Horace Albright. Now, not, uh, not many of us uh, are, uh, are around when a new concept of land, u land use uh, is, uh, is launched, but Horace Albright was. He was a young guy. Now we'd say he was just a kid recently out of law school and, and was in Washington uh, and became assigned to the uh, uh, secretary's office. And uh, he, uh, he was uh, a visionary. Uh, you ever hear that word over and over again. And uh, it's very for fortuitous that he uh, arrived uh, uh, when he did because uh, uh, it was all about to happen. Uh, no one, uh, no one, I don't believe, at least my opinion, uh, did more to advance the mission of the National Parks, uh, what became the National Park Service, 
uh, than uh, than Horace Albright. Uh, I was fortunate to know him and knew him fairly well. Uh, he was uh, older than I was, that's for sure. And he told me when I went to visit him in California, the nursing home. And he was uh, his mind though was sharp as a tack, and he said. Uh, you know, Bob, we're the only ones left. And I thought, I'm not sure what he means. But uh, uh, what it was is that uh, every other superintendent had died. And, uh, and that's what he meant. You and I are it. And I thought, well, he left here in 1933. Or he left the National Park Service in 1933. Left here before then. Uh, and uh, that, was, that was before I was born. So. Uh, uh, I, I finally figured out what he what he uh, what he meant. Uh, he branded the image uh, of the park ranger uh, into the American collective psyche, you could say. And along with Stephen Mather, um, uh, he uh, shaped the, the new National Park Service uh, into a unified agency, which it uh, still which it still is. So there's a system now. I know that most all of you know this, so I apologize for telling you something you already know. Anyway, it, uh, it evolved into a system uh, uh, which uh, uh, national parks, monuments, historic sites, so on, numbering, I think, the latest, what, 407? Eight. Forgive me. It's 408 <laughs> units uh, in the system scattered over 50 states. Uh, and uh, American Trust uh, territory, so uh, uh, it certainly has has grown from the from the, the days that Horace started helped start it all. In 1983, uh, Wallace Stegner, who was a renowned historian and uh, an author, uh, he wrote uh, that the, that the national parks are the best idea we ever had absolutely American, absolutely democratic. They reflect, they reflect us at our best rather than our worst. Now I need to mention uh, Marion Schink. Marion was uh, Horace Albright and Grace Albright's daughter. And she recently, I mean very recently, died at, uh, at, 90, at age 93. And uh, she spent a great deal of her life writing uh, and speaking about her father's uh, work uh, and was, uh, wrote a book about uh, the, the, the early years and sort of behind the scenes kind of thing. Uh, uh, Marion really loved Yellowstone and uh, she'd be very happy about what we have here today, officially opening, although it's been open for several, several weeks. Um, any, in any event, I, I wanted to mention her. She played an important role, and uh, sometimes these people kind of get lost in the background, especially when there's a, a kind of a, a dignitary like Horace that's being, uh, that's being recognized. You know, uh, several of us were uh, talking one day about Horace Albright and what in this park was named after him. And uh, this is it, this visitor center. There were no other no other feature or overlook or, you know, that kind of thing uh, uh, named for Horace. I p personally don't like, particularly like naming, naming features after people, with some exceptions. And uh, he was one of them. So anyway, we, we were talking, so, well, you know, we ought to just find, we ought to just do that. And I went out, to, I was in California and I visited him. And I said, Horace, uh, I called him Horace then. I'd never call him that when I was a young kid in the Park Service. But, but uh, I said, well, we've decided to do this, and we wanted to let you know. And he says, well, I don't like the idea. I said, well, I didn't figure you probably would, but you're going to have to suck it up because <laughs> we're going to do it anyway. And I thought, well, maybe he'll. I smiled when I said that. <laughs> so, and, and, and so we, we, one of the old rangers here said, well, I know a perfect little waterfall uh, in the Beckler part of Yellowstone and it doesn't have a name. So we looked into it, make a long story short, uh, uh, we, we uh, decided, well, let's pursue it. So we did. And uh, 
we went through all the paperwork and the bureaucracy and so on for Albright Falls. And uh, it's very, it's remote, and I doubt that many people have ever been there. Uh, and we uh, uh, decided to, to have a little celebration out there. We didn't have a color guard and that sort of thing, but we did, uh, we did go and we, and we uh, provided a couple of horses for Marion and Ross, and they were not young then. And uh, I, I always worry about horses and, and dignitaries. They don't always mix. And I was worried about the, these two people, but they, rode, they got on those horses and they rode uh, out there. We had, we had with us a regional historian, and uh, she, uh, it was a woman, Marcy Colpin, deathly, deathly afraid of bears. And I told her, I said, you know, uh, you don't worry about bears. Beckley, there's not that, bear, bears are not known to be very real frequent or common in the Beckler. So don't worry about it. Besides that, there's going to be 10 or 15 of us. And so she said, well, okay. We got out there, and she was increasingly nervous as the, as the day grew on, and she was going to have to crawl in her tent. And so she announced, she didn't ask, she announced that uh, uh, she was going to share a tent with, at that time, uh, the assistant superintendent, Joe Alston. He was not enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, well, you don't have any choice, Joe. And uh, so anyway, in they go. And, and uh, about one or two in the morning, Marcy uh, started, to, uh, started to move a little bit. And uh, she was concerned about something outside the tent that was under the tent. And Joe said, oh, don't worry about it. And anyway, she persisted. And it turned out to be a bear, and the bear had his had his paw underneath underneath the tent, trying jiggling her head around, <laughs> and she had a shirt on that she had dribbled the uh, the juice, the marinade from the, uh, the, the the meat from the night before, and the bear was was after it. So uh, anyway, <laughs> Joe gets up. And uh, by this time, the whole camp was awake, and everybody was clamoring around. And the bear reacted to this by crawling on top of Joe's new North Face tent. <laughs> and it started to bounce up and down. Marcy is horrified. She's terrified. And, uh, and so is Joe, because the claws went into his brand new tent and uh, ripped a big hole in it and what have you. Well, anyway. That's a, kind of a little long aside here, but that added a little color to uh, the Albright Falls uh, 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 dedication, so to speak. Except the chief ranger opened a champagne bottle before he was supposed to. Other than that, everything went fine. <laughs> if anybody wants to go, don't ask me because I don't remember how to get there. Well, it was a, a good fortune to have known uh, Mr. Albright. And uh, while his body was failing him, his mind, his mind never, never did. Well, we could spend the rest of the day uh, focusing on the, uh, the contributions made by Horace. And uh, oh yes, uh, uh, the, uh, one thing I should mention, and that, that is the magic relationship uh, of, uh, with of Horace Albright and uh, John D. Rockefeller. And uh, there's the superintendent of Grand Teton sitting down here, and I haven't even met him yet. But uh, uh, they had, they had a, uh, they did have a really uh, profoundly good relationship. And I think as a result of that, uh, Mr. Rockefeller uh, uh, reached in his pocket and they came up with a, with a, the dough to buy a lot of land down there and do it kind of on the sly. So, uh, so at least on the sly at first, because people were not, as they usually aren't, uh, supportive of a new uh, park that's uh, taking over uh, the, 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 ranch, the ranches. And, uh, but, but you know, it resulted, it re basically resulted uh, in what we have t today as uh, Grand Teton National Park. Horace uh, envisioned that it would be kind of like the South District of Yellowstone, <laughs> but and, uh, but that never uh, it never happened. 
You've heard that before, haven't you? Well, any, well Horace was a, a lawyer by trade. He was not uh, he was not interested in a career in the National Park Service. This was just sort of a stop along the way. Uh, yet, uh, uh, after he personally pursued this legislation for the National Park Service uh, and uh, made sure that it got signed by uh, President uh, Wilson, uh, uh, he stayed. And he uh, became uh, the superintendent of Yellowstone uh, for 10 years and uh, did all kinds of things uh, then uh, in Yellowstone as well as outside. And then he spent four more as the director of the, uh, of the National Park Service and then went off to be a lawyer and, and work for the American Potash uh, co Company. Uh, doesn't sound very exciting actually after Yellowstone being the director and what have you. But in his farewell speech, uh, he said, I'll quote here, uh, do not let the service become just another government bureau. Keep it youthful, vigorous, clean, and strong. Uh, now, uh, without Horace Albright, the National Park Service wouldn't be what it, uh, what it is today. And it's, so it's, it's fitting here in Yellowstone that this uh, visitor center bears his name. And uh, I'm glad you're all here to take advantage of the official opening of this, uh, of this completely renovated visitor center. Now, I saw, as I walked around here a minute ago, cookies. Is that what's over there? Oh, yeah. Are you supposed to ask them oh, yeah. to come over and have oh, cookies? Yeah. OK, why don't you do that? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Um, you know, there's um, a few things in between you and the cookies, um, however. Um, well, first of all, I would like to uh, recognize the National Park Service staff that's here with us this morning for all your work to help put this together. Thank you to each and every one of you for what you've done to help us out this morning. In addition, I'd like to recognize, if you look behind you, you'll see some uh, folks in some light khaki uh, uniforms. Uh, these are the folks that uh, are part of, I believe, the Youth Conservation Corps for Yellowstone National Park. Uh, there we have two groups that come in, and they are the future of the National Park Service. And thank you all for being here and being part of this this morning. In the nearly 100 years since the National Park Service came into being, Yellowstone has been visited by almost 167 million people. Transportation in the park has evolved from horse-drawn stagecoaches and wagons to automobiles, buses, and all manner of recreational vehicles. Old Faithful Geyser continues to awe and delight visitors, and the opportunity to see wildlife in a wild setting is unparalleled in America. When the park was established 143 years ago, nobody then could imagine how much the world would change and how important national parks would become as places in which the extraordinary natural and cultural resources of America are preserved. The National Park Service Centennial will be officially marked on August 25th of 2016. Today's celebration marks the beginning of a year in which many people within and beyond the National Park Service reflect on the meaning and value of the national park idea in the national park system. Equally important, we look ahead to find new ways to connect today's young people with their natural and cultural heritage. Preservation is not guaranteed unless people care. And people will care about and preserve what they know, understand, and appreciate. Today, we dedicate the Albright Visitor Center to a second century of serving visitors and building the future stewards of Yellowstone National Park and the National Park Service. I would like to invite Deputy Superintendent Steve Yopst and Chief of Resource Education and Youth Programs Linda Young to join Bob, Carol, and I uh, in the cutting of the ribbon, ribbon to reopen re, uh, Yellowstone National Park. Is there a ribbon behind me somewhere? Is there? Where is it? I'm looking for it. It's coming. Okay, so Bob and Claire, please join me. And um, 
And after this, we will invite you to share refreshments with us.